Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Everything appears to be working fine. I've got, just so everybody knows, this is a work in progress, but I've got Google Hangout going here. I've got a video camera going here. The door is open, so at any given time, anybody might show up. And if I've forgotten anything, I may have to wander off from time to time. This is John Ashworth, the Fitness Nomad. Thanks for attending the weekly series of Fitness Nomad Lunch and Learns. Today we're here to talk about a very, very important topic, accountability. Most people, that's the number one reason, pardon me, I'm going to take a little sip of water here right off the bat. The number one reason most people come to see someone like me is that they know they need more accountability. You probably feel the same way. You're watching this, you tuned into this for a specific reason because you know that you need more accountability in order to be successful. We all need it, whether it's related to our health and fitness or careers or some other personal goal or mission or something that we want to accomplish. Having some level of accountability is essential. And so what I wanted to do today was talk about how I provide that level of accountability for my clients here at the studio, why it's so important, what other people in the field are doing about this topic related to behavioral change. And I'll just tell you a quick story first. So what triggered this idea for this week's lecture was a uh, article I read in the Atlantic Monthly this month, the June issue of the Atlantic Monthly called The Perfected Self. You search that on my blog or you search that on the Atlantic Monthly site, you will find that article. And it's an article about behavioral modification. But that's what this is really all about. And what I found interesting was that kind of the father of behavioral modification was child psychologist B.F. Skinner. And he developed all of these theories and did a lot of research on this topic and made a lot of headway. And even at that time, in the early 1970s, I think it was, he was saying that behavioral modification could be a really important strategy for helping people improve their diet and lifestyle, lose weight, start exercising, all of these things. But somewhere along the lines, we got worried about becoming conformists and conforming to a certain way of doing things. We didn't want the government or anybody else telling us what we should do. So we marginalized B.F. Skinner's work and forgot about it. And now here we are back in 2012, and I'm going to take you through a set of slides to show you what happens when we don't have that level of accountability and we don't have adequate behavioral modification programs in place in our culture, in our country, to help people do the things they need to do. As I said before, and I said in the last Lunch and Learn, we are cave people living in an urban culture. I just had a client come back from Europe and she said to me, John, I didn't see any overweight people except other Americans. We are losing our edge. And if we are not careful, we are going to become fatter and fatter and sicker and sicker. And that's going to, it's already causing big problems. Those problems are going to become exponential as the childhood obesity epidemic stems out even farther and those kids get older and put more demands on the healthcare system. Somewhere along the lines, we've got to start changing people's behavior. And so that's what we're here to talk about today, how to hold you accountable to living better, being healthier, and implementing small strategies on a daily basis that get you where you want to go. Again, it's this idea of the compound effect. Most people approach this work, well, I'm going to get into that. So let me get into the slides. I'm going to try a screen share here on Google+. Plus. If I can find the right one. Is that the right one? Stand by. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> okay, this is it. Oh, that's not it. Pardon me. Again, a work in progress. Running late getting here. Wanted to start on time. Here we go. So I want to make sure I get the right slide. Otherwise, Google Plus can't focus in on the right thing. And it doesn't look right. Okay, so hopefully there. You can see my slide presentation. I'm going to keep it down in the corner on my screen. I'm going to move the Google Plus screen over to the left, and here we go. This is an expression I love. Fit yet? 
It's on almost every sign I put out on the sidewalk here downtown and much of my marketing materials, etc. It's this idea that eventually you will be fit. You might not be fit now. You might be struggling with your health and fitness and to get it together. But eventually, you've got to do it if you want to live a better life, be healthier, live a longer life, productive life, be around for your kids and grandkids and be able to get down on the floor with your grandkids and lift them up and go play with them, bike with your teenagers, play football, soccer with your teenagers, whatever the case might be. This question, I think, poses it in that way. Fit yet? If not, what are you going to do about it today? What small steps, what three small steps are you going to take today to start making progress on that? And that's what we're here to talk about today, as I've already said multiple times. Sorry, this is a little confusing. Is most people, that's not the right one, that's a copy. That's from last week. Okay, so just ignore that. I had a problem with Keynote, actually. It crashed on me, and I lost about 15 of the slides I had created. And by the way, that's one I cover first. There's a lot of stuff I'm working on. As I always say, I'm only one nomad. And I think my clients actually appreciate that. Because every week they come back, I've discovered some new tool or some new strategy for living more effectively, being more efficient in your life, related to your health and fitness, but also beyond your health and fitness. So today I wanted to kind of start with that. Um, but just a note about systems. And I think I'm going to try this. So just a note about systems. This Lunch and Learn series is a system I'm developing. This is the third one. This is the third one. Okay. This is the third Nomad Lunch and Learn. And it's getting better every time, but it's got a little ways to go. And it'll be constant perfection. I could have easily, I could have just as easily said, you know what, I'm not ready. I've got to get six more things under control before I start this thing. It's not going to go perfectly. It's going to reflect badly on me. And then we still wouldn't have started it. And you still wouldn't, then you wouldn't be benefiting from the now the third one that I've done. Perfect is the enemy of done, just get going. And develop your systems along the way. Be reasonable, don't be stupid. It depends on the context. Build your systems, because the systems are everything. Speaking of which, there's a ridiculous notion about personal training that people have. People have this notion that if they hire a personal trainer, two to three days a week they show up, they work with the personal trainer, they get a really good workout, but that's going to solve all their problems. And I think the thinking is that, well, you know, I'm not doing anything now. I know I need to get in better shape. So by hiring John, getting a really good workout with him two or three days a week, maybe doing a little bit of cardio on my own, and maybe trying to change my dietary habits just a little bit, I'll make progress because I'm not doing anything now. So if nothing else changes, I'm going to burn more calories, I'm going to lose weight. Unfortunately, very often it doesn't happen that way. Now, there's a caveat to that. If over time nothing else changes, if you keep your same nutritional habits, you keep everything else the same, and you start working with a personal trainer and getting really good workouts two to three days a week, probably you're going to get some results over, over time. But because so many people underestimate nutritional support of that effort and don't eat adequately throughout the day, which we talk a lot about in the lunch and learn before this one, these are all archived on fitnessnomad.com. You can catch an excerpt and then for your annual 1995 subscription fee, you can get access to the full versions of all of them. So I'll keep referring back to them. They're all really good. There is a method to the madness. There is a series I'm developing here. So it's this ridiculous notion that you can hire a personal trainer in two or three days a week and solve all your problems. There is so much more to it than that, which is why very often when people show up for their sessions with me, one of the first questions out of my mouth is, what, what did you have for breakfast this morning? What was for lunch? What was for dinner? And we had those conversations. And if it went well, great, we talked about that. If it didn't go well, we talked about why. We talked about a variety of different things over the course of that session so that by the end of the session, you walk away with three very, very clear action steps, the next steps toward progress in your health and fitness program. It's important, though, to keep it very, very simple because it can get very overwhelming in a hurry. And that is why it is a vain to do with more what can be done with less. And you're going to see that when I show you my system this week. Ignore that. 
Ignore that. My system that I created, your accountable three, these simple little cards, this is after two decades of work in the industry, I have created the accountable three card. You know what? It's the best, it's the absolute best thing I ever did. When I worked for Dr. Dean Ornish back in California at his Preventive Medicine Research Institute, one of the most important things, it seemed so simple at the time, but now I really understand it. One of the most important jobs that I had was to take the logs that the participants were turning in. Every week they would turn in a very detailed log about what they were doing. And I would go through those and I would put the data into an Excel spreadsheet and then I would report back to them in each different category, exercise, nutrition, and various other categories, stress management, lifestyle, what their percent adherence to the goal was. Now we didn't do anything ultimately with that data, we probably should have. We didn't have the software tool that I have now, which would have been awesome. A software tool that would allow us to actually look at the group as an aggregate show us, for example, what percentage of these participants are adhering at 80% or better. It's that 80% line is the key. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now, I encourage you, if you're watching this version on this video camera here, the one I'm pointing at, the Google version is going to have the slides. You're going to be able to see the actual things I'm talking about. So, just so you know. Those percent adherence scores, the clients love them. Because they knew generally speaking, what they were doing and how well they were doing and how well they were doing with that log every week. There's nothing like a data-driven report coming back to you week after week that shows you if your percent adherence to your exercise goal this week was 72%. And then being able to look at a series of those numbers. That over the last six months, for example, it went from 40% to 52% to 67% to 72%, let's say. That actually you're making progress the craft is going in the right direction. There's something really, really valuable and important about that. You know what? Most of the time, nobody's doing this. Nobody is keeping track of this data. Pardon me, I'm going to lift my microphone up onto the desk here. I just realized that it was sitting down there, so I apologize to the people watching this through Google+. And I'm just going to minimize the screen here for a moment. Make sure we don't have any questions or comments that I need to address. There is a chat box here, so if you've got a question right here, put it in there and I will answer it. So this Accountable 3 card is really, really important. It's a really, really important thing, even though it doesn't seem like it. We're going to come back here. Actually, if I turn, yeah, you won't be able to see that. Okay. So just to, to bring closure to this count of three card, we're going to come back to it in a little bit. The first three things are blank. So the first three things you pick, we pick together if I'm working with you as your coach. After a conversation, a detailed conversation about how has it been going, what's been going well, what's not been going well, what are you ready to implement this week, we choose three things that typically fall into three categories. Nutrition, exercise, or a lifestyle goal. A lifestyle goal being something like I'm going to practice stress management or deep breathing five minutes a day, five days this week. The rest of the things on that card are how much cardiovascular training you did today. And we don't get caught up in heart rate and average heart rate and all this, I don't want to call it nonsense, but it's important information. But the most important thing initially is that you're doing something. Once you're doing something regularly, then we can talk about the data in a more sophisticated way. But again, I think that's somewhere where people get really caught up is they get caught up in average heart rate, how much time did I spend in my training zone, blah, blah, blah. But after three, four weeks, they're not doing it anymore. What does it matter? We need to know, are you doing it or are you not doing it? And in terms of cardio, we keep track of the number of days and the number of minutes you do each day, regardless of heart rate. My basic guideline is if you've done something for 10 minutes or more, you count that toward the total. And that's a day of cardio. Because you've got to establish the habits, and that's what this is all about. The second thing is strength training. Did you do your strength training today or not? And I will tell you over and over again, I've got a client like this right now. For cardio, eh, it's hit or miss. 
but she's doing her strength training and she's making changes with her nutrition and man is she getting results. Really getting results. Strength training is the key. I talk a lot about that in my book, Weight Loss, the job no one is training you for. I don't think you can see that right now while the slides are up. I'll hold it up later. Really, really important. Then, now if you're looking at the slide, this is an older slide. It's an older version of the card. I didn't have time to update it today. The last two things, currently on this slide they say breakfast with protein today, yes or no? Still really important. How many balanced meals did you get today? Five at a minimum is the goal. Breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, okay? Currently I've changed them to did you log your food today or not? Yes or no? And if you did, did you hit your calorie goal today or not? You don't get to answer the calorie goal question unless you've actually filled out a nutrition log. There's no guessing here. Because even being off by a few hundred calories a day, a couple hundred calories a day, will undermine your results. And that's kind of what I want to talk about next is a story of a client for whom that is happening. And so you can see me again, so I'm not lost in the abyss. I'm going to go back to, let's see if I just click that, and I come back. I'm back. I'm back, okay? So I had a client here who... She's getting results, first of all, so I just want to be clear about that. She, and I have to be really clear about that with her because she wants these results to come faster than they're coming. But it's an unreasonable expectation based on her level of adherence. Now what would normally happen, and what used to happen in the past when I used to work with people like this, is we'd both get frustrated. We'd both be saying to ourselves, geez, you know, what's going on here? You're adhering to the program, why aren't you losing weight? Maybe it's your thyroid, maybe it's your genes, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's what it is, is no tracking. You've got to track this stuff. And, and typically, I think as fitness professionals, we shy away from the tracking. Sometimes for legitimate reasons. You don't want to steer people off. We don't want to steer you off. We want to help you be successful. We want to keep you motivated and inspired and keep you coming back. And if we get too aggressive with making you turn in a card, talking about your data, and weighing you in, and measuring your body fat, doing all this stuff, and you're not ready, you're gone. We never see you again, and that doesn't help anything either. So somewhere there's a balance. For the most part, I would say right now, it's about 50 to 60% of my clients are turning in the Accountable 3 card every week. For a variety of different reasons, the rest of the clients aren't ready or aren't willing to implement that system. That's okay with me as long as they don't come back asking why they're not getting results. And that's the beauty of it. If you're a fitness professional out there and you're watching this, that's the beauty of this system, is it's, if, if my client's sitting right here in the consultation chair and we're having a conversation about adherence and adherence to the program and here's all the variables, here's your accountable three data sitting out over here and instead of I think you should be doing and you should be and there's all this back and forth and the subjective stuff and you're getting into a big fight with your client, it's the data, Susan, is over here and, and the data is telling me that your adherence levels in all areas is still about 65%. That's why you're not getting results. It really helps you have that conversation. And I think it helps you, the fitness enthusiast, the client. And that's what I'm experiencing now. I've been using this for, it's going on two years now. I've been saying a year and a half, but it's, it's going on two years that I've been using this system. And I can tell you it's really great and the clients really get it. Sometimes they still don't like, they still get frustrated with how slowly results are coming. But when you can actually show them the adherence data, if they keep an open mind, if you keep an open mind about this, you can say to yourself, you know what, John's right. I'm not doing it at the level that I need to. That's a difficult conversation to have because you have to admit that, first of all, man, I have to do more to get results. This is already a lot of hard work. And second of all, you have to own up to the fact that you haven't been doing it. Sometimes people feel guilty, they feel ashamed, they get embarrassed, they get anxious about it, whatever. So we have to tread lightly. But you have to do it. You have to track it. And that's what this Accountable 3 system is all about, is keeping that tracking simple. The woman I mentioned earlier who's getting great results and primarily focused on strength training and seeing me one day a week in small nutritional changes, she's turning in a car, but she's not logging her food. So she doesn't really know day to day whether she's hitting her calorie goal. But her other accountable three things are addressing nutrition. She's eating a much better breakfast with protein now. She's eating more balanced snacks throughout the day. We know that. She's doing better. She's cooking more whole foods dinners for herself each week. Okay? 
But sometimes we don't have to know exactly, we just have to know the basics. The more tracking you do, the better, but you have to find the balance. Okay? I think that point has been made. So I'm going to pull for Google+, Plus, pull the screen share back up, because I want to show you this graph. I want to show you how this looks when you graph it out. It's really interesting, really interesting. So this is a graph, and I'll try and explain it for the, for the video camera here. This is an adherence graph. So what you see at the top is your, your adherence to your account of three overall. So there are seven things on this card. And like I said, they get labeled as nutrition, exercise, or lifestyle goals. So we can look at adherence to each one of those categories. But we can also look at adherence overall to all three things combined together, which is what we usually do and which is what is usually the most telling. This is a good example of a client who was struggling to get results in the early stages. In fact, I remember a conversation late one night after a session. I think we spent an extra 30 to 45 minutes talking here about her lack of results. She was upset. She was anxious. She was frustrated. She was tired. She was on the verge of quitting. We sat down, we looked at the data, I showed her this graph, and I said, look, you've got to get to an 80% adherence or better. And that's when the results will start coming. And that's what you see on this graph. So that conversation probably happened in the first third of this graph somewhere, where mo all of the dots except one are below 80%, and there's three of them that are about 55%. Then about halfway through a 12-week time period, her adherence started to improve. It went to 72% roughly, then above 90% for a couple of weeks in a row, then still above 80, about 82%, about 88%, 90%, 88%, and guess what started to happen to her body weight and her body fat? As soon as that graph changed. And guess what happened when you can actually show the person, when you can actually see this as a fitness enthusiast? It's great because it really reinforces what you have to do to get results. Really, really reinforces it. So unfortunately, they started out in this talk, we don't have this kind of a system in place. In healthcare, in personal training studios, in your local gym, are they doing this? Do they have an accountable three card? Do they have any kind of accountability system other than your attendance in programs? other than a few isolated sporadic measurements of your body weight your body fat? Probably not. You know, some people do. Some people are doing a good job of this. But as a whole in the fitness industry, I don't believe we're doing a very good job of this. And so here's the result. And this is a series of maps that show our country filling up with people who are greater than 30 pounds overweight. So the blue states turn to dark blue and eventually they'll turn to dark orange and dark red. And those darker states represent higher percentages of people in our country, in each state. It's a percentage of people in each state who are greater than 30 pounds overweight. So BMI greater than 30. There now in two, 1991, we start to have some dark blue states. Now we got 10 to 14% of people in those states, 30 pounds or more overweight. And then there's just more and more of those states, 1995, 1996. Now in 1997, we have some light yellow or whatever color you might call that. So now we've got 15 to 19 percent of people in those states 30 pounds or more overweight. Essentially what this is showing you is the trend. The country getting fatter. It's very disturbing when you look at it this way. Most of the time when I show these people are astounded. It's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? That's what it looks like. So that in 2007 we have three states where 25 to 29 percent of the people are obese or overweight, one-third. Now this is five years ago, I'm pretty sure I read some stuff recently that this number is approaching one-third everywhere. We're going to lose our edge in this country if we're not careful, if we don't find a way to hold ourselves more accountable to the process. Now I heard a little ding, which either means somebody else is here or Something has happened to my presentation. So let me just check on that for a minute. Take the screen share off. I don't see, okay. 
I don't see anybody else's video feed here, but that doesn't mean nobody's here. I think I see. Okay, so we're good. We're still broadcasting. So I'm going to go back to the screen share. All right. Okay, so it's a disturbing place we're in. It reinforces the need for accountability. And now this slide, this is just a slide. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, about eight of, well, more if you count the boot camp picture. It's just to let you know that as dire as it is, approaching one-third of a population, overweight or obese, we can make progress. It does work. It really does work, but you've got to get all three pillars in place. And when it really works, it really works. Sarah kind of became a spokesperson for my business. She's a, she's a chef. She came into the program. She completely transformed herself. She got inspired, so inspired that locally here in Madison, Wisconsin, she opened a restaurant called Fit to Eat, and she's serving really healthy, clean food, which you can buy from her in bulk. She can prepare and plan meals for you and cook them for you, and you can put them in your freezer and heat them up, or you can just stop in and have a nice meal anytime you like. And more information about her business is at fittoeatmadison.com. And if you're looking online here, these are just this is just kind of the transformation, where she came from and where she is today. So the, the big transformation is what I'm trying to say is possible. The thing you see on The Biggest Loser is possible. But as you see on The Biggest Loser, it is like a tremendous amount of work. And for the average everyday individual in an average everyday life, trying to keep up, trying to stay with it, trying to take care of your kids, trying to go to work, trying to do all the things you need to do, it's very difficult to do what Sarah did. It's certainly possible. But it's also possible, and here's how I want you to think about it, it's possible for the long run. So it may have taken you 10, 15, 20 years to get to the point where you are today. If you can reverse that, and I talk about that in the book, if you can reverse that in five years, I think you're doing pretty good. You can easily reverse it in two to three years. So if you can reverse 15 to 20 years in two to three years, you're doing pretty good. But you can't do that if you get caught up in the all or none phenomenon. This is a problem in this business and people's pursuit of improved health and fitness and, and weight loss is they get caught up in this concept of all or none. That I gotta lose it all in 12 weeks or six months or I'm out, I don't wanna do this. It doesn't work that way. These are just Sarah's numbers. She lost 35 to 40 pounds, dropped 7% body fat, seven inches, and you can see by the pictures how great she looks. Quick sip of water. Okay, here's the reason it's so difficult. Just briefly, there are three really important things that you have to get in place. That you have to get in place in order to be successful. I think in life, that's why I do this. That's why the title for this talk was not why accountability is so essential for your health and fitness success. It is, but for your personal success. Because I believe very strongly that your success in life comes from a foundation of being strong, fit, healthy, vibrant, and vital. I really do. And it's these three pillars that are so difficult because you've got to get them all working for you. If you want to lose weight, you've got to get all of these working for you all at once. You've got to get your nutrition in place. You've got to get five balanced meals throughout the day, every day with enough protein, fiber, good fats, staying away from saturated fat. You've got to get exercise going. And not just any old exercise. Cardiovascular exercise, strength training, strength training. Which, which is at the top. Strength training at the top because it's so important. And that strength training is not like one routine you do for the next six months or a year. You've got to cycle that strength training over the course of time in very specific ways in order to get results. And then you've got to combine the cardiovascular exercise in the right ways. Flexibility, if you're going toward 40, and I can tell you now from personal experience, I can't get away with working out without a good warm up and a good cool down and a regular yoga slash stretching program, my body can't take it. And I see this over and over again with my clients who come in, they expect their body to respond like it did when they were 25 years old. It breaks down a little bit, they got nagging injuries and suddenly they've got all that to deal with and they're trying to keep up with their exercise program and their body's not keeping up. It ain't easy, okay? Again, it ain't easy. Your accountable three is the key. 
Pardon me. Because, for example, for example, just related to your stretching, because that's the area where a lot of people fall down, they just don't do it. You come to do a session with me, the primary focus is either on coaching and coming up with, excuse me, the three things you need to do for success, the three next steps, that's the primary thing. But the second thing, or sorry, I'm a little distracted there. Pardon me, hold on, let's start that over. It's like hitting the reset button. It's like restarting on the computer. Sometimes, you know, us entrepreneurs are very creative. People engaged in our muse. And suddenly, boo -doo -doo -doo, ideas flooding through, and you just kind of have to stop and let them process and then move on. Okay. So flexibility often gets ignored in the context of the session. I will teach you things. I will show you the things that I think you need to do to improve your flexibility and be able to stick with your exercise program more effectively, but then you have to do them. So one of your accountable three might be, I'm going to make sure and stretch for five minutes a day at least five days a week. So we set the denominator at five and you go out for a week and you see how you do. And if you hit five, you get 100% adherence. If you do it three times, then you get, you know, whatever that is. Then again, the math in my head, 55% adherence. That's how you begin to tackle this one step at a time. And here's the thing, you might be saying to yourself, well, how in the heck is stretching really going to help my weight loss efforts? Well, how it's going to help your weight loss efforts is going to prevent your back from tightening up and getting sore so that when you show up here or to wherever you're going for your strength training workouts, you can actually continue to do them without the back breaking down. So your flexibility becomes a foundation for your success, but unless you're documenting and working on it and living with a little bit more intention, and thinking about what do I got to do to get a stretching program going, the whole thing can fall apart because you don't stretch. And these are the things I don't think enough of us are hearing and talking about. These little, little things. And it's okay, right? Again, coming back to the all or none thing. Most people approach this as an all or none. Well, either I'm losing 25 pounds in 12 weeks. Is that even realistic? Yeah. Or I'm out of here but they're not considering the fact that their body, pardon me, that their body might not be ready for that, that you might have to start small. And that's a lot of times what this process is about, is being willing to take a step back and start with what's in front of you. To put those things down in your accountable three card and get going. Right? And this accountable three card and this accountability system can be used outside of your health and fitness. Pick anything. I mean, sometimes what gets in the way is a lack of sleep. Sometimes people don't lose weight because they're not sleeping enough. And then, so then you go backward from there. So let's back it up. Well, I'm not getting to sleep at night because by the time I get out of work, it's 7 o'clock because I'm really busy. My boss is putting this big strain on me and I got this big project and it's going to go on for six months. So by the time I get out of work, it's 7 o'clock, and I am going for a walk after work, so by the time I, I finish work and I go for my half-hour walk and I get home for dinner, it's 8 o'clock. So I don't eat until 8.15, and then I don't really want to go to bed with a full stomach, so I'm, so I'm watching TV and I'm hanging around, and then I'm kind of sitting on the computer and messing around too much because I'm just not feeling overall satisfied in my life because I'm overworked and my girlfriend broke up with me or my wife's my wife and I are fighting, whatever the case might be. So I'm staying up later than I should. So it's like 11.30 before I go to bed and I have to be up at 5. So you back that up and you say, first of all, is there any way you can get out of work earlier? And if not, let's finish work and eat and then go for a walk. And let's set a rule in the account, not rule, but an accountable three action step to say, I'm not going to watch, I'm not, gonna, I'm not allowed to get on the computer. I stayed off the computer every day this week after work. And suddenly you're getting more sleep, you're waking up feeling more energized, your morning workout is going better, your sessions with me are going better, and all because you put down one simple thing on your car, which was, I'm going to stay off the computer at night seven days a week. Something I have to work on. Well, that, I, that I'm doing really well with now, but that I struggle with from time to time, by the way. All right. <clears throat> 
think, as far as the slides are concerned, I want to make sure we wrap it up here pretty quickly. The other part of the accountability process then is doing what you do with your financial advisor, for example. Most people don't do this with their health and fitness program. It's the same kind of thing you do with your finances or in many other aspects of your life, at your job, at work, you do an annual review. We never do this with our health and fitness. We never sit down and say, all right, over the last three months, what does my percent adherence look like to the things I was working on? And how does that relate to the change in my body fat, my body weight, my BMI, my cholesterol levels, my resting heart rate, right, resting, heart rate resting blood pressure, etc.? We just don't do that. Why not? Because we haven't been taught to do that. It's not built into the systems that exist or don't exist in the gyms that you belong to. And so unless you're working with someone like me, it doesn't get done. And even if you are working with someone like me, I don't like the phrase someone like me because I'm in a different camp when it comes to this stuff. Even when you're working with a fitness coach or personal trainer, most of the time the data, forget about it. They're happy if you show up for your sessions and you get a good workout and you have some productive conversations around nutrition and other lifestyle stuff that's going to help you. But beyond that and beyond tracking maybe your weight and your body fat, they don't care. They, it's not they don't care. They don't have a system in place to do what I do, which is on a quarterly basis, we redo the entire health and fitness assessment that we did at baseline and every quarter, we redo that and we look at those numbers and we look at how those numbers relate to your percent adherence on your accountable three card. And it's very, very interesting. That client I was talking about earlier that's getting results, what do you think we found when we redid her submaximal exercise test on the bike because she wasn't doing enough cardio? Not much change there. Her cardiorespiratory fitness had not changed that much since baseline. Strength, vast improvement. Still got results on the scale and on the body fat measurements, waist measurements, inches lost. But cardiorespiratory fitness, okay, Susan, we've got to focus on this now for the next three months. What are we going to do? What are you going to put on your card? And let's make that the focus for the next quarter. And so we start to attack this a quarter at a time. A quarter at a time, we reset the plan the overall overlook of the whole thing, and we get going, and we just take a look every 10 to 12 weeks. What is the data telling us? What is going well? And let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate the beautiful changes on the scale, and, you know, that's awesome. And then let's talk about the challenges and what's happening and why it's not happening. And let's, let's set some action steps so that we can continue to improve your program and the results you're getting on an ongoing basis. So where I want to finish now is with something I found over the weekend in that Atlantic Monthly article that talked about B.S. Skinner and behavioral modification, et cetera. There was a gentleman, Dr. Cameron, Dr. Michael Cameron. It appears he's retired. I tried to get in touch with him yesterday, and the email address that I was using on the website where his faculty web page is wasn't working, and I caught some other video of classroom thing where they surprised him, and I think it looked like he might be retired. But I'm going to track him down, and we'll go from there. But he's a, he's a guy, behavioral psychologist, who was 110 pounds overweight and just said to himself, geez, you know, I'm a behavioral psychologist. What would B.F. Skinner do? How would he approach this? And so he, he, and so he started to implement these, all of these things I'm talking about. My accountable three car is a behavioral modification system, a very simple one, a beautiful one beautiful in its simplicity. I love it. I love it because I created it and because it's working. It really works. And by the way, I'm looking for five, maybe ten people who want to try the type of virtual program that I'm going to talk about here next briefly. If you're interested, send me an email, john at thefitnessnomad.com, or put a comment on this video in at Google+. Plus and we'll have a conversation about it. I don't even have any idea how much I should charge for it or how exactly I should structure it. But I'm getting there, and I, what I need first is to find out if anybody's really interested in doing it. It's what Dr. Cameron is doing and has done with his 
clients and patients and participants in his research studies, and it really does work because it implements this system. It comes back to that notion I was talking about earlier. There's no substitute for meeting with a guy like me, a personal trainer, fitness coach, who's a real expert, one to three days a week, even two days a month. There's no substitute for that. There's no question that I believe that everybody should be doing that. That everybody has at least 200 bucks that they're spending on some ridiculous thing, and they could come here and they could put that money down on the table and say, two days a week, John, set me up with a program, let's talk about it, get me going. <clears throat> At any rate, Dr. Cameron's got a 10-stage program that I got excited about because when I saw it, I thought, God, it's, it's all the stuff that I'm doing. I just don't have faculty position at a university, and so it's harder for me to get the notoriety and the information and the ideas that I'm creating here out into the world, and that's a big part of what these Nomad Lunch and Learn series are about, and broadcasting on Google Plus is doing that. So, Dr. Cameron's 10-stage behavioral modification program. There's some other point that I want to make there. I can't think of what it is. But a big part of what that program provides is accountability through self-monitoring and a stepwise process, regular check-ins with a coach, and an incredibly detailed Excel spreadsheet and 10-stage system, he is able to generate a pound to two pounds of weight loss for his participants. Like I said earlier, this can absolutely be done, you just have to do it. But you need the accountability. And that's where, I mean, and again, that's where everybody falls down. Because you're beating yourself up, right? Why can't I do this? I know I need to lose weight. I know I need to be healthier. My doctor's telling me to get my cholesterol down. I just can't find a way to do it. My life is so busy. And you start beating yourself up. And you, and, and you just go down into this depressive, beating yourself up, BS state that doesn't do any good when all you really need is to find a group of people to support you and a coach that drives that process. And to start taking little steps every day, every week. And you'll start making progress and that progress will build on itself and pretty soon, a year from now, two years from now, you'll look back and think, man, there is no way I'm going back there because that was an awful place to be. And now I know I got my plan and as long as I stick to my plan and I take these small action steps and I stick with the habits that I built, I'll be okay. Reminds me of a story of a woman. I read this a long time ago, and I just really, really liked it. And it was the story of a woman who was really overweight, and she found a way to get the weight off. And you know what she did? It was just really a mindset. And, I mean, it is the mindset that I try and instill in my clients. That she looked at it as this process, and I think I talked about this somewhere else recently, so forgive me if you're hearing this again. She was overweight, unhealthy, feeling terrible about her life. She looked at that as digging up, that she had dug a big hole in her life. A big hole for herself. I'm going to bring the camera back on the Google Plus. Personalize a little bit more. So, and, so she was way down deep in that hole, and she knew she needed to get out. And so what she, the way she thought about it was she thought, you know what, every, every single time I do something healthy for so regardless of when I fall back and I eat chocolate when I shouldn't or I skip breakfast or I miss an exercise session, regardless of all that negative stuff, when I do something positive, that's like throwing a shovel full of dirt into that hole. And if I can throw enough shovelfuls of dirt into that hole over the course of the next year or two, I'll get out. And she did. I think that's a really, really great way to look at it because otherwise, that's how we're looking at it, right? We tend to focus on what we're not doing, the results we didn't get, how frustrating that is, and on oh, bemoaning the fact that it should be easier, we should be able to do it, and then nothing happens. Staying positive and staying focused on the little things that will make progress, that will throw shovelfuls of dirt into that hole are the things that will make you successful. So always remember that, okay? So the other components of Dr. Cameron's program, and again, it's essentially what I'm doing here. So if you need the help, I am here. I am here and ready to help you, and I think I have at least one, if not two, client spots available in my schedule in downtown Madison, and, and I'm looking for a virtual group to do. Okay, where am I? 
The other, so the, a big part of what his program provides, just like mine, is that accountability. We're beating that point into you today. Accountability, accountability, accountability. It's the number one reason people come to see me or someone you know like me. The number one reason people hire a personal trainer or fitness coach. They know they need the accountability. But it's the accountability system that's often missing. The second part of it is, are the group components. There's nothing better for me than watching a couple of clients interact with each other as one is finishing and the other one is arriving. Those conversations are just golden. Every Tuesday night, there's a lot of that that happens in the evening. There are a few clients, they always see each other, they kind of check in with each other. They, and, they, and they talk about progress and they share thoughts and ideas and things like that. That is a power, powerful, powerful thing. So it's another big component of Dr. Cameron's program is the group component. Correspondence training is what he calls it. And, and I've discovered this now. It's not that I didn't know it existed before, but I'm really thinking that I need to develop some programming around this so I can expand my reach. So look for that soon. And here's another simple concept related to all of this and, and something that Dr. Cameron pointed out. It's a matter of saying that you're going to do it, doing it, and then reporting back. And again, through the use of all these great app, apps on the phones, Fitbit, Twitter, Skype, Uvu, which is the video conferencing tool that he uses that I need to check out, sounded pretty good. It's very easy to do all that. It's very easy to say what you're going to do and go public with it. Do it and then report back. Whether you did it or you didn't, there's a huge amount of accountability in having to report back if you didn't do it to me or to the rest of the group participants. One of the most powerful things about the boot camp that I ran for three years was that group component. The most powerful thing about the work that I did with Dean Ornish that never got really reported was the group component. The community that developed around that work was so powerful and so effective at helping people achieve what they needed to achieve. It was astounding to watch some new person come in and listen to the people that had been there for a year or more interact with each other and to watch this process of that new person really, you know, gaining from that experience was extremely powerful, extremely powerful. So then he has this 10-stage program, and this is where my presentation broke down because I've keynote crashed and everything else. So I've got my three by five cards, five minutes, and we'll be done. Number one, stage one, and, and again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through his case, 10 stages, and there's some places where we differ a little bit so you can get a sense of kind of, excuse me, how I take those 10 stages and what I do here. The assessment. I do this in my Nomad Kickstart program. More information at nomadkickstart.com. The assessment is huge. Health and fitness and nutrition assessment. So we look at everything, risk factors your cardiorespiratory fitness, your strength levels, your flexibility levels, your ability to move, functional movement screen. So actually looking at, and again, that comes back to that flexibility point I was making earlier. How well can this person move? What are we going to be able to start with? What are we going to be able to do? What are we not going to be able to do? Nutrition. He estimates resting metabolic rate, which I think is a big mistake, which is why a long time ago I invested $5,000 in a resting metabolic machine. Again, the numbers, and I have them right here in this computer behind me. The measured number versus the predicted number can be off by as much as 700 calories. You want to have a measured number if you can. If you can't, that's okay. You can estimate your number, and then there's a variety of different things that you need to do to make sure you got that right. I'm not going to go into detail about that here. That's probably a whole bunch and learn on its own. It's definitely, there's some information in the Wisdom Center on that. So if you click that Wisdom Seekers button, on my blog, you'll find the Wisdom Center. So, so then the whole assessment, very important, got to establish where you are today so we can figure out what it's going to take to get you where you want to go. Then number two, comprehensive intake. So as part of that assessment, we need to find out all about you. What are you eating? What are you doing for exercise? What are you not doing? What's your job situation like? What's your life situation like? How's your life at home versus your life at work? What are the time constraints on you? What do you have to do? What are your habits and your tendencies? 
what are your comfort foods, what are you, where are you going wrong, where are you, where are you likely to overeat or undereat or drink too much alcohol, etc. Getting into all of that. That is all part of this process. This is, again, not showing up for two workouts a week and hoping for the best. That's a Hail Mary pass toward your weight loss efforts, and that ain't going to cut it. Number three, or no, I said that already. Comprehensive intake, and then from that information, number three is a motivational interview, where again, in a sense, that's us sitting down and talking about what you're ready to change, and then starting to set your accountable three cards as such. Number four, stage four, is starting to get, Dr. Cameron starts to get his participants in stage four into some level of correspondence training, and this is where I'm saying, not only do I want to expand my reach beyond Madison, but what I want to do is I want to start developing some correspondence training for my current clients so that trying to facilitate ways for them to connect the way they do when they cross paths here at the studio. Number five, stage five in Dr. Cameron's program is a virtual behavioral intervention. And essentially that's a, that's a Skype call or a Uhu video conferencing call. So everybody comes on the call and it comes back to this Say what, you, say what you were going to do, did you do it or not, and reporting back in. So everybody comes onto the call, and everybody can see each other's head on the video screen. Kids and I call them video heads when we watch them introduce football players. <laughs> and people on TV, it's kind of weird on there, but in this case, it's not so weird. So everybody's there. And then the coach, out in the open, connects with every person. So you're not just providing some anonymous report into the abyss of what you did or didn't do. You're having to come back to the table with the other group members, and there's a lot of accountability built into that process. Number six, rituals, routines, and behavioral rehearsals. So in other words, one example of that, this is developing strategies and routines and rehearsing them, and rituals that you're going to do. So every morning you're going to get up and you're going to make yourself a nice breakfast with protein. That's a ritual. You're going to start to develop social networks at the gym and in your life that are going to help you support help support what you're going to do. Hiring me could be in this number six, a ritual routine or behavioral rehearsal. Coming up with a strategy for eating out could be a rehearsal. And a quick tip there is if you're eating out somewhere and you can get a hold of the menu, look at the menu ahead of time, decide what you're going to order ahead of time, stick with that, and don't budge from it. That will save you a lot of overeating when you eat out. Pardon me for a second, I've got to check. Make sure, okay, I've got 12 minutes left on the video camera, which means I'm almost at an hour. I've gone on too long, and that's one of my goals for these lectures. Is I really want to keep them to about 30 to 35 minutes. So I apologize for going a little longer. I do think it's worth it. Number seven, stimulus control. What are the triggers for you? A trigger for a good thing or a trigger for a bad thing? But for example, for me, one of my triggers is when I get tired at the end of the day, I want to eat some sugar or some pretzels or some snacky, bad, high-carb thing at night that I shouldn't eat. So the trigger is being tired at the end of the night. What am I going to do about that? Well, I'm going to cut some carrots up. First of all, I'm just going to commit myself on my accountable free card that I'm not going to do that. But then I'm also going to have some other things that I can eat that aren't going to destroy my calorie goal for the day. It's just an example. Number eight, exercise and intensity shaping. So this is a big part of what I do here is progressing your exercise routine. This is an area where people go wrong over and over again. Subject for another lunch and learn is the concept of progressive overload and changing the stimulus on a weekly basis so vital to your success, so often not done. Number nine, relapse prevention. I really like this one. Um, and it's just about thinking about relapse in advance. And then um, number 10, I forgot to write down, but it kind of goes along with that. So number, ten, number nine and 10 kind of go together. It's thinking about putting a relapse prevention program into place and then, if needed, implementing that plan. So you don't become one of my past clients that I often see now, not often, but occasionally outside my window, they're coming downtown to run some errands or something, and I'll see them walk by and I'll think, geez, 
they've gained some weight since I saw them last. It's too bad they didn't stick with me or stick with something. Relapse prevention program, thinking about that in advance, will help prevent that from happening. Okay? To bring it all together, the number one reason people come to see me, they hire me as, my, as their fitness coach, accountability. And so what I've done is I've spent the last two years developing a true and lasting accountability system that is simple, effective, and that gets people results. Regardless of whether or not you ever come to see me or ever talk to me, please take away from this talk that the only way to success is holding yourself accountable to the things that you know you need to do to be successful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in on Google+. Plus. This is John Ashworth, the Fitness Nomad. This is the Fitness Nomad Lunch and Learn series. Next week, I have no idea what the topic is yet, but I have a number of ideas. Take care, everybody.